Okay, so we're all set now. Um, as I say, we've got two ways of doing it. Um, I've already done it on this side, and I've put this panel in here, as you can see, and it's obviously the white on the inside, and it probably is the easiest way to do it. So if I show you what we did here, literally, quite roughly, we take uh, a square of the card. I'll just take another one, and you want them to be oversized so we can cut them in, because it's obviously better to have too much than too little. So we've just got your two pieces, just like this. And then basically, there's, there's lots of different ways you can do this. The big thing you wanna do is to save sort of space, is obviously in here, we've got the inside of the cargo area is gonna come in, so we need it to be sort of roughly in the same. So if you sort of do an imaginary line between obviously this part here and down here, that gives you a nice area. So if you run a file, you can see exactly uh, what I mean in there. So it's where are we? There we go. So you're basically running file, and that way you've got good clearance right the way through, and it's not going to affect it. So if you roughly run it the same, so just for speed, I'm going to just use a, a touch of super glue here, my oversized pot of it. Okay, so then all we're going to do is just going to run a tiny bit of glue. Just down this edge. Okay, and then what we'll do is, as I say, we're roughly going to view um, actually how it is. So we'll start at the top and take it down to running in. Okay, and we'll just hold it for a second. And then just to speed things up, we've got some kicker here. On there, just like that. Okay, same with the inside. Something like that. Okay, then we'll come along. And then placing that as in there as well. Now it doesn't matter if it's slightly off, because to be honest, we can uh, maneuver it once it's in. It's quite tricky because the other one's in the way now. But there we go. Both of those are stuck on. As I say, we've got them at slightly different angles now, but we're going to trim them in so it won't make that much difference. As long as like this one needs to just sit in here a little bit more. Okay, and then I've got some stills as well, which you can see on the site, which basically shows me um, putting some clamps in to hold them open. Um, but obviously, we're using super glue this way, so it's not so much of a problem. So, what we do, we're just going to chuck a lot more super glue just on the insides, just so it works itself around. And then, if you take a cocktail stick, you can literally just drag that around to help the capillary action of the glue. Just like so, and then quick squirt with a kicker, and there you go. Now, obviously, this is a quick way of doing it. Um, it's better to use glue, and if you use extra thin, it'll melt it in and help it all go in, and the various other bits and pieces like that. The other one I haven't spoken about is this one at the rear. Now, this is a step that basically folds down um, so the crews can get access to the engine. They stand actually on it, and it's a step um, for working on the underside of the engine because the underside of the engine has got a door that can open up. There again, loads of stills on the site. Go and have a look. Um, but the easiest way to do that is to take a slightly thinner um, piece of the actual plastic card itself. This is a lot more uh, floppy than the other stuff, but it helps to bend to the shape. So what we do, we're roughly going to um, sort out the shape. So we're not going to go massively... over the top but what we want to do we want to get the roughly the size of it so you know there's no rights and wrongs over sizing with this um, if you wanted to measure you see you're grabbing something with some measurements um, you know we've got about 15 millimeters there by about uh, 21 millimeters across this way you could either use say super glue um, as I'm doing here or literally you could just pop in with some uh, extra thin uh, to put it in. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll use a little bit of extra thin and that way you can see both ways of doing it. So all we do, we come along, run extra thin, down in amongst all these bits, all the way along, along that top edge is quite important. As I say. Then all we do we're just going to come along with this one, flat edge, so it's next to the top. Okay, it's going to go in, and then all we're going to do is push it and hold it with your finger in the shape. So obviously from the inside, you've got it like this, 
Okay, and then just hold it a sec. Obviously, if you're using super glue, this would happen quite quick, but this won't take too long. And then what you can do is just pop along with a knife and cut it. But by just sticking your finger in there, it'll just hold its shape. But you will have to hold it for a couple of minutes um, just to obviously stop it sort of popping back out. Otherwise, it does have a habit of lifting out, and then you push it back and lifting out, and you end up with little crease marks in it and bits and pieces like this. But this is just a quick way of backfilling that one because, as I say, it is a step. Um, so there isn't a big hole in there or anything else, it's just a nice little gentle curve. Okay, so literally we're just going to hold this for a moment so we're getting this type of effect. And then what we can do, you can come along, I've got my finger in the inside of it now, just with a bit of glue, just to help it out. So I'll just get this one set in position. Okay, so when you're nice and happy, if we start with this inside one first, we just grab a knife here. All we're going to do is literally just going to run a knife and just following along that panel and we can just chop it off and it's nice and smooth and it's not going to affect anything on the inside so that's a nice way of doing it. These outer ones also have to be a little bit careful because I've only just done these but if you come along with your scissors to start with you can just snip away roughly. You don't go in too close because you say you don't want to upset the, the joins but you can just take them off roughly. Just like that okay and then literally all we're going to do grab your file and we're just going to put them in flush with the bodywork which obviously takes a few minutes to do just be a little bit careful as you're playing now down in the bottom here it actually bends slightly out which isn't so much of a problem because we can adjust it with the floor piece It everywhere this floor piece we can just slightly trim this in just a little bit so it bends up we're gonna to have to do something with the inside of it anyway because it's gonna actually make the bottom of the fueling points which come up in amongst them all like this so it's all little jobs we've got to do but as I say we just get these all sanded in plain and just looking nice like the other ones so obviously once you're all done I've got a little rib of um, styrene at the top which just makes the top of the actual um, refueling well itself but that one's in and so is the back one just like that. Now the next thing to do we just need to literally just slightly take out the thickness of the plastic and the easiest way to do that is just to sand inwards to it. Now you could come along with your Dremel and start cutting away into it but the other way of doing it if you just get a file selection of files here circular one's quite a nice one and then all we're going to do is come in diagonally sort of about 45 degrees to the plastic and this will just shallow it out and give the effect of being thin plastic just like that and that gives us a sort of thinned out look to it okay so we just sand off the front of it a few little scrapes we've made and obviously if you get a flat file you can just tidy up the edges There we go, and that gives us a nice thin looking area. Now, I've already built this bit here, but this is the battery panel. So obviously when you see this photo here, all you can see is I've basically replicated it. Now to do that, I got some um, styrene sheet and I basically just laminated it. Okay, let me just move these out of the way. I just laminated it to give it that effect. Now I've got some cables running around this at the moment, but to be honest at the moment, they're all just lying loose. Um, if we just hook them out. It's lead wire, so they all move around and everything else like that. But down here, we've got the battery area. I know it's a bit tricky to see under this light, but we've got a battery area, we've got the shelf, we've got the little power converter here, um, and all the other bits and pieces. So when that goes in, let me just hang the cable out it will fit on the inside and will give us this type of look.
which doesn't look a million miles away, or I'm hoping it doesn't look a million miles away from what we've actually got. So that gives us those bits there. And by the time they're painted up and detailed up and we've added a lot more fuse wire to it um, or lead wire to it, hopefully it will give us a nice looking um, sort of uh, bay there. Then obviously we've got the same to do on the other side, which we do as well. So the next point we can actually do is start to work on this one for the actual fueling bay itself. So they're all little bits to do. Um, so I can start on that one in a moment and we'll work through. The other things I've been working on at the same time, which you can prepare yourself and get your bits and pieces ready for it. Obviously with the RAF um, fleet of um, helicopters, uh, you've actually got inside here, we obviously got soundproofing that you'll get on any helicopter, no problem at all. Um, but the RAF ones also continue them right up to the front bulkhead. Now, what I've actually done here, and I was playing with these things earlier, is that normally you have something like this and it has all the bits on it. So what I've done is I've covered it in aluminium foil to give it that same effect of which you can see in a moment. And then what the re how I did that was, all you do, get some aluminium foil, just like this. Obviously, nick it out of the kitchen. Quick and easy way to do this. I've got the same pattern, obviously, on the roof. Everything else like here. So we just lay it on, okay, and then just squash my finger down on the top of it. And obviously it will transfer your pattern all the way through. And I hope you can see it's going to be one of those things being shiny. But you can see the pattern shows all the way through. And that's how we got it onto that surface there. And in a moment I'll show you actually how to get that on there just like that. But there we go. So if you want to get some foil sorted out, you can actually, you know, prepare to do that. Okay, so I've just run some extra thin uh, glue, uh, super glue around. This is quite a thin one. The reason I use a thin one is I don't want a thick one because I need it just to sort of touch and grip, so to speak. So we've got our foil here that we've cut out, and obviously we haven't got the doorway in there yet. But it's cut to the right shape, so we just drop this down. And then what we'll do, we're just going to come over the top, line up one side roughly just trying to grip already and we're just gently going to push that down obviously we don't want to push too hard because we don't want to push any of the pattern off there we go we're just going to push this in just like so and then what we'll do when this is dry we'll cut out the door but what we need to do for the minute is just let that dry in just the touch to do but there we go that will give us our backing um, catch it off the light but it's got the right pattern so by the time it's sprayed grey it will give us the same effect of what we've got here um, although slightly reversed and then hopefully with a little bit of movement and a bit of shaking it will give us our nice foil pattern to obviously this particular um, with the RF ones have all that nicely soundproofed in um, down like that then if we wanted to you could obviously run a sharp knife down here and peel it back and give it that rounded look as if it has because obviously it is a, f a form of quilting when it's uh, totally dry as I said we'll come in from the back and we'll cut open the door but what we're going to do we're going to do something quite clever with this we're going to cut that we're going to roll it back and then we're going to paint it a slightly different color so it looks like it's the curtain coming across and then that way we know it's the right size and the other bits and pieces so that's that bit done we'll leave that to one side just to dry a second so the next things we can actually do then is obviously we'll start to work on these um, fueling base. So we'll continue sanding these down just like this and then we get the detail sorted out and I'll, you can run through it as I scratch build the fueling areas. Okay, so what we've got to do now, um, what I've actually done, if you can see it down here, I've actually just shaved in a little bit and then a little flick out the bottom for allow these little bits out. So what you have here, your plaster card will come along and actually fits into the the groove of the fit if you like it makes it all flat now I've got a piece here which is um, just a rough cut so we're talking it's um, 15 millimeters by 21 it can probably be cut down a little bit but basically this is just going to come along okay it's going to fit just on the inside like, like that now obviously it's a little bit high at the top so I'm going to shave a couple of mil off of the top just like that okay and that is going to sit straight on it just like so okay and for speed and the normal thing so hold on if i just show you the other way so obviously you've got your your box on the inside he says trying to do this with one hand and do it properly there we go we'll go in just like that which makes our fuel area so what we do is 
we'll glue this one in now so there again we'll use a drop of super glue just purely for speed ideally I would use CA I'm um, sorry um, the normal glue and let the weld action uh, do the business so we we'll just get a cocktail stick and just drag this down both sides and up okay squirt the old kicker give it a blow there we go and obviously I can do the other side of here but that gives us now our actual refueling bay completely done like that and then so this will allow the bottom when it's shaved in will fit into it obviously we're going to have to shave this bottom up but then it will give us our effect um, something like that in there um, when that is up in position so we'll do that in a minute so what we do we just do the other side as well just like so just push that in and we just drag some glue down just like that squirt a kicker just hold that for a second and there we go that's done so what you could do now is what I'll do in a moment we'll just sort of work out how much we've got to take off and most of it is this front area you can see it sort of tapers off to one side so if we just get our sanding stick we can square it up just a little bit just on that side same with the other one there we go those are squared up and we'll just see how we go so we have to take just about another millimetre off. Let's use a stronger stick just to speed things up. Let's see. What we have to do is we want a nice corners on them. So we just use a blade just to nick in a right angles at the bottom and it will just help with the way it all fits. How close are we? Ooh. Just a fraction more. front edge this is what it's all about just do a little bit at a time and then that way you don't want to overshoot and end up taking too much because if you take too much um, you end up all types of trouble then there we go that is all going to fit hopefully very nicely and actually it's not a bad fit underneath I just hold it there for a second and that's what we're going to get on the inside this thing here so by the time we put the fueling bay in we're going to have to um, play with this a little bit um, to make this a little bit smaller to give us our sort of effect. I've got my drawings here a bit. Let's bring you out a bit. As you can see here on the drawings, it's this part down the bottom um, we need to bring up and various bits and pieces like that. So they're all little things we can fiddle with. So what we do, we'll do the same on the other side. Okay, it's a bit of a mess down here, but that's uh, par for the course of Scrunch building. Um, what we've actually done it would be great to make it in photo etch, this refuelling area itself, as I say, we've got the photos and show them up and there's various photos on the site and things like that, but that's basically what we're trying to do. Okay, so in here, plastic hard at the back, and what I've done, I've roughly sketched um, the actual, where the hoses and the various bits and pieces are going to go, just with a pencil on there. Now you can probably see as well, is that I put a little extra bit out, which was a bit of plastic hard, scored, bent, give us the right angle, and then sits in there. Because it's black and uh, black photo and it's all black inside, it's quite hard to see, but there's actually a step that comes out here, um, which goes just like that, so we've put that in as well. In the meantime, as I said, using a block of old um, resin, um, Photo etch would have been a nicer way of doing it, but we can do it this way, we can carve it. What I've done, quite carefully, I've sanded in this little area here, which is the actual um, area that it, the refueling rig hooks onto. So I've put board a big hole in the top, small one at the bottom, and I've angled it roughly how it is. And all I've done on the end here, I've given it a little bit of uh, dob of super glue with a piece of piping cut off to give us our little filler cap. And that will sit um, just in here, and we'll go in something like we can get it hold of it and we'll pop in something like so uh, give us our, our fueling little dock there um, which is pretty close to the photo at the same time also we've also made up out of some 
evergreen piping, this little piping section which is going to fit just in here like this and we'll come across then afterwards what we can do is go around with lead wire and mask it out. We've also got another bit of piping because what happens is we've slightly thinned uh, this undercarriage area and this still I've taken a little shave just off the inside um, as you can see so it puts a little hole in it just to make this all fit nicely but that is then going to fit in there just like that um, and all the fuel hoses and everything will bend around it and go around so it is all actually coming pretty nicely together it's a very long drawn out job but it is part of the thing for scratch building I've been working on this now for about sort of about four hours in total um, just doing it when you're bending um, this type of stuff this is evergreen um, styrene rod two ways if you warm it up a little bit first just run it in your fingers get a bit of heat into it you don't want to put a flame near it because it'll melt and end up stretched through but if you just sort of you know get your fingers on there and if you've got some Tamiya bending type things you can actually put it over there and bend it and as long as you don't go much more than um, 90 degrees to start with just don't go whipping around but just gently bend give it some time to sort of get there and just keep curling as I'm doing now and curling 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 and as long as you take your time with it as we're doing here you can actually end up with uh, a nice little angles just like this and obviously they'll reflect and they'll come back up but you can do it quite nicely um, and make nice little bends and things like that with most of the scales just warm them up a little bit first but say you put a flame near them they'll stretch and all the rest of it but once you've got it in there it's quite flexible and you can bend it um, to what angles you like and then if you want to set it in a certain location um, like for this one for instance when I was doing this sort of um, H shape uh, this bit here obviously to get it to set if you put a little bit of super glue um, on it give it a squirt of kicker it'll lock it in that position and then you can just sand it up afterwards as is needed so that basically takes care of those so what we can start to do we can start to get this together so what we'll do we'll start with the rear part now what I've got just down here nice little tip put a bit, bit of um, tape down there anything will do just protect the surface put your super glue on that then you know it's there don't drop anything in it um, and it keeps your work safe and also what it also does is stop if you've got your top off your super glue it stops it drying out and going horrible and all the rest of it so if I just grab some tweezers we're going to get this top one into position so we're just going to blob on the back just like that probably a little bit too much and then we can sit this in and work it into exactly where we want it to go and because we've drawn those lines um, of all the bits and pieces of areas it goes and we check our references and obviously we haven't got you know um, the luxury of certain scales and various bits and pieces to work with but it will give us our rough area and something like that and then our hose system is going to come along so what we really need to do that's already grabbed on which is not what we wanted we want it to move a little bit first so we need to just bring this over just a little bit and raise and lower as is required so that the hose system this thing is H block which will fit quite nicely is going to go in there just like that so we're all happy how it's going to be so we're just going to give this a bit of a nudge to get it to set in the right place And we're happy that that's set so then as I say the H plate here we can do the same thing we can grab it with the tweezers underneath just the two blocking ones at the back and we can stick them into location as well and if we just bring you in you can see what we're doing here so we've got that one in there as well so there's that H and then this pipe just drops down the bottom which is quite a nice little touch so if we're just drawing it in here we can just manoeuvre that around a little bit and then hopefully the bottom area will still come up and it's going to meet in that area just like that we'll obviously just have to shorten a few little hoses but it all still fits in there just like that and then by the time we've got the wiring and the bits and pieces all going on there and we've got another piece of hose which is going to go across and we're going to have a little bit of um, I'm going to paint it up a little bit of a scale that goes on the front there it will give us the rough idea then we can go around it with some wire and tidy it up and all those bits and pieces that go with it but that gives you the rough gist of how it's all going together obviously got to do the same for the other side so forth and so on but as I say it's getting there it's one of those things um, you could go around measuring it but you're probably going to be a little bit off so it's better to sort of go in there 
test fit it, too short, too long, you can recut, make your joins, uh, and away you go. Keep your references nice and handy. You can print them off the site, um, off the disc, if you've got it on the disc, um, and they're all on those something like 130 reference photos we've got of this bird now. So it's going quite nicely. So I'm gonna carry on getting that in there and start to play with some more lead wire um, and getting that roughly into uh, position. As I say, you've got various thicknesses of the lead wire, which is quite nice because we can poke it through the hole glue it on the back side get it glued into position and then you can then bend it pull it put it in and then obviously you can then set it exactly how you want it and obviously in this case there's a lot of golds and brass colors and then there's bits of greens as well and then we can go around and make all these colors up as we go and then paint it in and i think it will really will just bring it to life and give it a sort of a nice look to it all but it's one of those jobs that's probably not coming to life yet but by the time it's got some paint in there it'll really jump out and we'll be away Okay, so we're getting quite inundated down here with all the mess, so we're going to have to have a nice clear up. But as I say, here we go. This is where we're to at the moment. Uh, there's the refueling area, just like that. So we've got some co uh, some lead wire going in there at the moment. Um, obviously, this long one down here needs to be bent in uh, down to this side, and then we'll be feathered in. And there's lots of other little wires to go in, but because they're wire colour, I'm going to put them after it's been painted. So that's basically all we can do. I've just got one more hose then to go across on this H shape that goes across and then it, it steps. It's a little bend that goes over before it goes in this side. But that's really what we can do from there. The other thing I've been working on um, at the same time is obviously the panels which are going to be sitting on here that we've actually taken off. Obviously what we need to do is thin them slightly down each side because obviously the width of the plastic arm that goes in to make them fit. But also from the scale effect, these things are very, very thick. So what we've got here, I'm a little bit away through it as well. We've got a door just done like that. Then I've been doing it with the Dremel to start with. And now I'm basically just finishing it off with some files. Obviously starting with quite a coarse one. I'm working my way through different grades. I'm just basically polishing it up now because it's a lot thinner than the original. If you see it, I bring you in. You can see, obviously, with the two, the difference here. We've obviously got obviously the thin, uh, thick original there uh, on your right compared to the thin one. And then once we're all done, hopefully um, this one will be thinned out a little bit as well. It'll fit on here with a hatch in the up position and we're done and dusted for that little area. So there's a few little bits to go on there, but for the moment I'm quite happy with the way it is. I'll just get that last pipe in and then we go on. So the next thing we can do, um, he says, having a quick mechanic look for it, is to finish up these cockpit areas. So as I say, super glue this bit on there now. It's all nice and now totally dry. So what we can do, we'll just get our knife. We know the curtain will then go over to obviously this side, so we need to cut this one. So as long as you push upwards, I just bring you out a bit. So with your cutting, I want to go upwards and push it up. That way, it will cut against the, the side there. And the same on the other side. Here we go. That can go up. And then what we'll do, we're going to fold that round. And there we go. That's our rear compartment. Obviously, you'd say it's a bit shiny at the moment, but it's a, a very fast, quick way of doing that. And then obviously when we come together with the other bits and pieces, actual flooring area here, then obviously this will sit in and it's got the right pattern and all the bits and pieces and obviously it'll be done grey and by the time we've got a curtain and the other bits as well. So we've got to do the same bit of soundproofing between the two parts. Um, with the kit part itself, it comes with them and it shows you a little bit of instrument panel, circuit breakers and things between the two, uh, the front cabin and obviously the main cabin. That have to be soundproofed as well, so we do it exactly the same way with the foil, with the print, and then when it's oversprayed, we'll all be okay. So we'll get have a bit of a clear up and we can get these bits done. <laughs> 